Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're going to talk about the dreaded overflow error in Microsoft Access. What is it? What causes it? And how do you fix it? Today's question comes from Rowan in Kirkland, Washington, one of my Platinum members. Rowan says, I have a database that's been working just fine for years. I haven't made any significant changes to it in the past few months. All of a sudden, every time it starts up, I get an overflow error. It goes away, and the database continues to run smoothly after that, but the error is annoying, and I've tried for hours to hunt it down to no avail. Help. Well, first of all, Rowan, I'm going to say that just because you haven't made any significant changes to the database doesn't mean that a minor change didn't cause the problem. I've run into this myself. You go in and you make like one little teeny tiny tweak somewhere and all of a sudden you break five things. So this is one of the reasons why uh, my buddy Alex always recommends version control because then you can go and see what the changes you were that you made. Me, I just comment everything. But yeah, I kind of get it. Uh, even little tiny changes can cause problems. But let's talk about the overflow error, uh, what it is and what causes it and hopefully how you can fix it. Well, let's first talk about what the overflow error is. I asked ChatGPT to give me a concise definition, and basically it says that it happens when a program tries to store a number that exceeds the maximum size that its data type can hold. This is overly simplified, but it's the most common reason why you'd get an overflow error. Imagine trying to pour a gallon of water into a cup. The cup can only hold so much before it overflows. Similarly, in programming, each data type, like integers or long integers, have a limit to the size of the number that it can store. If your operation results in a number larger than this limit, you get an overflow error. So that's the first and most common reason why you get an overflow error. If you have an integer and you've got 20,000 in it and you try to double it, well, you're gonna get an overflow error if the data type you're working with is integer. That's one of the reasons why I always say for integer type numbers, always use a long integer. Right? I never use just integers or bytes. Or, I mean, almost never. Because for everyday use, long integer goes up to like 2 billion. All right? So that's a much, much better number to store your data in. And back in the old days, like when I was a kid, you know, in the 80s, um, programmers really had to squeeze as much information as they could into the very limited amounts of memory that we had. So distinctions between integer and long integer made a big difference, right? But nowadays, with machines that have gigabytes of RAM and terabytes of hard drive space, space is no longer at a premium. Just go with long integer. You don't have to worry about it. Later on, if you want to optimize, sure, you can take a look at all your data and see, okay, I can squeeze all this into an integer. But yeah, just, just use long integer and double, okay? In fact, that brings up the next one, data type mismatches. In fact, I got a whole separate video on type mismatches. All right, go watch this if you're curious. But essentially, if you're trying to convert one number into something else, or you're comparing an integer with a double, for example, or a date with a string, you might get a data type mismatch error. But if this is buried several levels deep, like so let's say you got a query that's based on another query that's based on another query, you might not get a type mismatch error. You might get an overflow error instead. So that so you gotta you gotta start hunting. You gotta start peeling apart the layers of the onion and figuring out which query or which control is actually causing the data type mismatch. Usually with type mismatches, if you try to do something like take a, a value that's a double and cast it or, or convert it into an integer, let's say, and the double has a number that's too big, you'll also get an overflow error. Same thing with divide by zero errors. We all know we can't divide by zero, right? And if you got it in just one calculation, you'll get the divide by zero error. But again, if it's nested several levels deep, right? You've got, you know, you got a DLOOKUP statement in your VB code that's pulling a value out of a query, and that query is based on another query, which is based on an aggregate query, which gets its value from a linked table. Somewhere in that chain, if there's a divide by zero error, it might result in an overflow. All right, so overflow errors tend to cause problems. They tend to, they tend to pop up when, you're, when your error isn't on the surface. It might be multiple levels deep, and Access just basically says, I got no idea. And the funny thing about overflow errors, too, is they just pop up and it just says overflow. It's not like a normal error where it gives you, you know, hit OK and, you, and it opens up the debugger and it puts you on the line that caused the problem. Oh, no. Oh, no. Overflow errors are not that kind. 
Overflow is basically Access's last ditch going, duh, 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 duh. I got no idea. And it doesn't even tell you where the error is. you got to start finding it. All right, that brings up the next one. Queries with overly complex calculations or multiple levels. Same thing I just mentioned, right? It could be a query based on a query based on a query. I see this a lot with aggregate queries, right? Where you're summing or you're averaging a whole bunch of records and you take the data from that aggregate query and feed it into something else, like a cross-tab query or whatever. If any of those levels cause a problem, overflow, okay? The next one isn't very popular, loading large data sets into memory, like arrays, for example, or arrays. I know you guys pick on me for how I pronounce array. Too bad, I don't care. Um, <laughs> let's say you're loading up a whole bunch of stuff into a giant array, like the Midas array, right? Um, and you're pulling data out of a record set, you're loading it into memory, and too much, you run out of memory, boom, all right, overflow. So be careful how much stuff you actually try to load into memory. There's a reason why we have tables. Yes, I know they're slower. Arrays are faster. Arrays are faster. Sorry, I, I, I'm not changing it. I'm, I'm calling it an array. That's how I started pronouncing it when I was a kid. Um, next up, linked tables with incompatible data types. I see this all the time when people try to link to SQL Server tables, for example. SQL Server has some data types that just really aren't compatible with access, like date time two. Right, it's, it offers greater precision and a wider date range than access dates do. And so there's some conversion that you have to do there before you can just work with it. So that'll cause overflow errors too. And that's not the only one, there are others. And finally, my favorite, low system resources. That means you got a memory leak, which is normal, somewhere in your system, in Windows or in your access database, whatever. Um, that's why I always say at this point, if you've spent more than five, 10 minutes trying to figure out where the overflow is coming from, reboot the system, restart access, run down my troubleshooter. All right, I've got a comprehensive troubleshooting checklist on my website, run down this. If you've got a weird error you can't figure out and you spent more than a few minutes trying to figure it out, run down this checklist. And it's often some of the most obvious things you wouldn't think of, right? Restart access, restart all access databases, shut down access completely. Compact and repair the database. Compile the database. Uh, you know, some, some warnings like don't use online storage. Don't be running your database off of a, a Google Drive folder, for example. Um, you know, make sure you're running out of a, chest, uh, a trusted location. Restart Office. Reboot the computer. How, how many times have you had errors that just went away when you rebooted the machine? And that would be with the, the low system resources. You might have another application that's gobbling up memory. All right. Old, old versions of web browsers like Google, Google Chrome were awful for this. Chrome used to suck down memory like it was a, a drunk on a, a weekend binge, right? <laughs> but just run down this checklist, all right? Try all this stuff. If you got a weird error message that you can't figure out, it's right on my website. It's free. Check it out. Now, I recently had this problem with my personal stock portfolio database. This is a, a database I've been working on for a year or two now, and I haven't released it yet. I've released a very, very early version of this, but... Uh, yeah, this is, this is my personal database. So anyways, when I open it up, boom, you can see it right there, overflow error, right? And I just ignored it for a while because I'm like, yeah, all right, there's probably a bug in there somewhere. I'll figure it out later. But this was a tough one for me to, tr to troubleshoot and to hunt down because I couldn't figure out what was causing it for the longest time. So let me walk you through the steps that I did to try to figure this out. Now, the first thing is if you have a startup form, which this database, I believe, has, I believe that's the main menu is the startup form. Let's double check. Options, current database. Yeah, I'm, I'm starting up with the startup form. So if that's the case, what I recommend you do is go into your startup form, okay? Find the form's load event or open event, whichever one you have, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to put a breakpoint on the first line in the form load event. So we can step through and hopefully see what's causing this. I cover breakpoints and debugging in my Access Developer 15 class, by the way. All right, on error, breakpoints, watches, immediate window, all that stuff. All right, so now that I got a breakpoint set, I can close this and I can restart this form. So let's just close the form and reopen it again. And there's my breakpoint. Okay, I'm good. Let's step through it. Step. Okay, step. Step, okay, good, step, we're out of it, and pff, there it goes. So that tells me 
that the overflow error isn't caused by anything in my VBA code, which leads me to the next thing that it could be, either another event that's running, which I don't think there are any other ones, or there's a problem with one of the controls or data sources that are on this form. And I can right here see that I got some type errors now that I didn't have before, right? Sometimes just doing this with the breakpoint will open up a possibility that you could see something else is going wrong because that puts you into like a debug status. So now if I open it, see now I don't get that error message. Only once I step through it with the, with the editor here that I notice that. So something's wrong under here, okay? Just to double check, there is no more code and any events on the form. Let's see, nope. So always check your events. Those are the easiest things to find. So something's wrong in here, okay? Because I got some type errors. And specifically, the error came on this gain property. Now, if it's in a subform, I recommend open up that subform and work on it directly. That is the broker stats form. So let's open that up. And okay, no error. And the gain's coming in just fine now this time. So maybe it isn't in here. Let's, let's take a look and see. All right, design. Let's see what's inside the gain formula. Let's go to data. All right, so gain is okay. I, I do have some division in here, but it looks like I handled the division by zero problem. Okay, yeah, that looks fine. Right? If total invested, because you're because you're doing gain is total profit over total invested. If total invested equals zero, then put a zero in there. So I, I've handled that already with an if statement. I, I'm pretty good with that. Whenever I do division, it's like as a programmer in my head, I know that I got to handle zero, especially for something like that, that can be zero. Okay, so that's not the problem. Make sure you check for it in your footers too, because if, if this guy's based on division by zero, make sure this guy has it as well. It does. I took care of that. So go through and check all these other formulas. Make sure there's no other division by zero. Okay, that all looks fine. All right. So the next thing that I want to try, this thing checks out. Make, make sure it doesn't have any events. Let's see. Any events in this? I don't think there are. Nope, no events. All right. So all the formulas and calculations are fine. This form opens up fine on its own with no errors. All right. So that tells me that it's not the subform. So let's go back to the main menu. Now, what we're going to do is first... We're going to make a, a backup copy of the main menu because I'm going to start removing things. That's my next step. I start removing objects until I figure out what's causing the problem. That's my next step. Check, check all your code first. Check the controls and your formulas next. Now we're going to start removing stuff. And at a database level, you could actually even start deleting objects. Back up everything for, hold on, I got to put that slide up. Back up your stuff first. I don't want anybody complaining to me that you didn't back up your database and then I told you to delete your main menu and now you don't have a main menu anymore and you didn't have it back up. Back up everything. Back up your database. Back up your whole computer nightly. And anytime you're going to make major changes to any object in your database, back it up. Or when I work on my website, for example, I back up the whole page. In case I mess it up, I can just replace the old page. Okay. Now, I already know I have this whole database backed up, so I'm okay. But I'm going to just, while I'm in here too, as a second level of backup, Plus, it's, it's easier to restore just an object, right, if you're in here. All right, let's copy and paste the main menu. So that's our backup. And I like to put in here, I'm going to rename that. I'm going to put, I, I like to do this, main menu F backup, because then it sits next to the other one. If, if it's copy of, then it sits up top. And if you're way down here, then you, right, it's right next to it. All right, so let's go back into the main menu, design view. Let's remove that subform, right? Save it, close it. Open her up, and I'm still getting, okay, so it has nothing to do with that subform. Okay, hmm, design view. Let's take a look at, okay, there's no data in this form. There's, it's not bound at all, all right? Let's try removing other objects. Let's remove these guys. Okay, save it, close it, open it. Ah, still getting it. These are just text boxes in my, in my, uh, my image here, my, my clicky clicky to go to uh, my website. And that's a button over there to save the form position. Let's try removing those two just to be thorough. All right, delete these. Make sure you don't have any hidden stuff on here, by the way. Usually when I hide something, I make it red so it shows up. I make it invisible and red. But I've had students of mine that have made like something, the you know, same foreground background color because they want to hide it. They don't know about turning it invisible. And there's a little teeny, you know, uh, text box sitting there then you can barely see it in design mode. All right, one more try. Okay, okay, variable not defined. Now that's because it's loading up the main menu note. That's okay, let's do that. 
Save it. Close it. All right. Oh, oh, still getting the overflow. Okay. All right. Well, guess what, guys? There's one control left on here, and that's got to be the culprit. What is this thing? Well, that's supposed to be a, bar, or a, a pie chart showing what percentage of my investments are in which sectors, right? Like tech and healthcare and whatever. Okay. But I just recently switched brokers, so I deleted all of my holdings in, in this database, and I'm getting ready to add them for you know when I, when I purchase new securities. Um, and so this thing went to zero, so that's probably what's causing the problem. But I wanted to walk you through this to show you the, the steps, the process that I go through. All right, so this guy is a sector chart. All right, it's a chart, and it gets its data from this sector value to Q. This guy could be our culprit. Let's see here. First of all, let's delete this thing, save the form, close it, because you never know. Sometimes forms cause weird problems. Okay, no more, no more error. So it's definitely that control or what's underneath it. Let's take a look at that query. Sector value 2Q, open her up. Ah, look at this. Look at this. These are all the sectors that stocks or whatever companies are in, right? Energy, financials, and so on. And since I recently just deleted all of my hit my savings, not savings, my, my holdings, sector percent is coming up with a num. Yeah, that's the problem right there. Let's take a look at the formula. Sector percent. Look at that. What did I tell you? It's a buried divide by zero error. Because this thing is being used in the SQL for the chart, which is a pretty complex SQL statement. Okay. But now I can fix this guy. I can say if right here. We'll just put a if, right? Uh, total portfolio equals zero, then zero, then that. And that should get rid of that error. Let's close this. Open it back up again. All right, we got zeros in there now. And now let's restore my main menu form so I can delete this guy that I've been messing with. And if you want to leave the backup, leave the backup. Just copy and paste the backup. Copy, paste. And we'll just call it main menu F again. All right, let's open her up. And... Oh, no more error. It feels so good. Finally to hunt that down. <laughs> but yes, as you can see, even I don't always catch those divide by zero errors as I'm programming. Sometimes, you know, you get you get on a roll, you get going and you, you're working with it. And I always build databases with sample data in them because it's easier to see. But I never experienced deleting everything out of here. So there you go. What this is supposed to be, by the way, is a little chart. So let's say uh, you open up, uh, let's say you buy, this is, this is designed to be on a much, much larger screen, uh, but this automatically gets the current stock prices from, uh, from the web. It's a really cool database. I'm, I'm going to release it one of these days, but it's still, it still needs some love. I've been using it for my own personal stuff. Well, let's say, uh, let's say, I don't know, Adobe, all right? Let's say you invest $100 in it, okay? And what are the shares worth? Uh, all right, 552. So let's say let's say you invested $400 and you got one share. Okay, so it's now worth 553. And let's say Amazon, uh, let's do so many different. Let's do Boeing. Yeah, Boeing's doing real well today. It's uh what is it? Uh, March 14th of 2024. I had some Boeing stock. It's down like uh 10% over the past week. Thanks Boeing. Anyway, <laughs> still love you. Anyways, let's say you bought a share of that. Uh, what's it worth? One ninety four. Let's say you paid um, uh, three hundred for it. So you <laughs> actually no, not three hundred shares. You got one share and you invested. Ah, you got one share and you invested three hundred. Okay, there you go. So you lost one hundred six bucks. Anyways, this guy. Let me refresh it. This guy tells you what industries. I got seventy four percent of my money in the tech sector. All right, and it'll tell you over here your profit, your gain, all that. Stuff. It's, there's, there's lots of this database, but it's not ready yet. If you're interested, if you want to see me release this, post a comment down below. And I do have another video on tracking your stock portfolio in Access. Here's an early, early version of it that's online. Um, this one will actually go out. Uh, the members version of this will actually go out and get the information uh, from the web, I think. I'm not sure if the free one does. It's been a while. It's been like three years since I built this. But my personal copy has a lot more bells and whistles in it. Of course. Of course. So if you want to see me release a copy of that as a template, let me know. All right. So as a recap, 
steps to fix, all right? Step through your code first with the breakpoints. Start where your form starts. And if you got an auto exec macro, start with whatever that starts with, all right? It's usually in a form. You might find it with form code. If that doesn't work, like with our example here, check all your field formulas. Specifically look for divide by zero errors, okay? At that point, if you don't figure it out, make sure you got a backup. Back up the object you're working on and start deleting objects off of the form. Subforms, chart objects, web browser controls, all those things, okay? When you find the object that's causing the problem, check its data source. Where is it getting its data from? In our case, it was a query. And that query had the divide by zero error in it, which didn't, which wasn't apparent because the chart was just saying, Bleh, we got no idea, right? And if necessary, if you go through, you know, multiple forms, you can't find it, just start deleting objects out of the database. Start deleting forms and code and stuff until you find what the problem is. And if it's a weird error and you still can't figure it out, run down the troubleshooter. Before you go through all these steps, in fact, I would run through the troubleshooter. In fact, I'm moving run through the troubleshooter up top. And oh, actually, hang on, let me do this. Actually, I can just move this up there. Oh, that looks much nicer. All right. Okay. All right. Let me start over. All right. So I'm going to put run through the troubleshooter first. All right. At least the simple stuff. Compact and repair. Restart access. Restart your computer. If the problem doesn't go away after some of the basic stuff on the troubleshooting list, right? Yeah. I'm not saying you have to go through reinstalling Office or Windows, but, you know, try the simple stuff first, especially a reboot. Then start going through these steps and see what happens. And if you still got problems, you still got questions, post them in the forums on my website, and maybe the guys and I will help you. I got a great group of moderators on the website. They do a fantastic job of helping people. Uh, I do try to read through the comments on YouTube, but I don't get to them as often as I check the forums on my own website. And if you're just a, a, a visitor, you can still post in the visitor forum on the website. Anyways... If you like this stuff, if you like learning with me, come check out my developer lessons on my website, specifically Developer 15. I covered uh, uh, debugging and troubleshooting and breakpoints and watch lists and all that kind of stuff to go through and try to troubleshoot and trap errors in your database so they don't become a problem. So check it out. I'll put a link down below. But that is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming as long as you keep watching them I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing free four hours go watch it and okay okay a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course 
So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.